Hello everyone, it's the end of the year or the start of the new year depending on my level of procrastination and this is gonna be a random rant video and I'm just taking a blind shot on predicting the future maybe I'll be right, maybe I'll be wrong I am pretty passionate about tech and if I actually had money to buy stuff then I would have made like a tech channel I'm gonna be talking about specific categories of tech like TVs, computers and such and I feel tech in general has become a lot matured like a lot of devices are perfectly fine even if they are a few years old and it is important to keep using them to save the planet. A lot of my knowledge comes from other tech channels. My faves are Linus and Lawn TV. They make great content and what can I say? I take the tips very well. LTTSaw.com People in general don't upgrade their TVs every year. They keep using them for like 5 years and then maybe upgrade but I feel a lot of people just don't care. Okay so TVs are pretty cheap nowadays. You can get a 55 inch 4K TV for like $500 and these TVs are good enough for like 90% of people out there. And then I see videos like this and I wonder who and why would anybody buy them. I mean the uber wealthy guys I guess but still. These TVs cost like I don't know $20,000 and you need like whole wall for them. I don't know about you but personally I don't like the aesthetics of this. To me if you have the money it's fine but they just become more of a decoration than anything. It's like an overcompensation thing. Like who has the biggest TV in their living room. No offense but if you aren't one of those guys that analyze the pixel quality of every screen then I feel those TVs just aren't justified. Why would you buy a 100 inch TV for $8000 when you can buy a projector? The pixel quality is just fine for most people and is more versatile. The main advantage of an actual screen over a projection is the brightness and you can even watch movies outside in midday. First who even is doing that? Most people I know watch movies at night so I feel it's not a big problem. Taking all this into consideration, it's hard for me to imagine the high end TV market to be popular. I mean I don't know, it just seems odd. Oh yeah, and the reason like the latest 100 inch TVs with the micro dot technology is so expensive is of course the R&D but also a whole new motor glass has to be made for bigger TVs. Motor glass is basically a big slab of glass that is cut to make smaller TVs and the bigger the motor glass the bigger the individual TVs. The tech inside TVs are cool but but seems overkill for just like a home theater. If I aren't like a real movie buff then I wouldn't invest a lot of money to just get the biggest and latest. Maybe just get the reasonable option that are also pretty big. But the screen technology like AMOLED, Mini LED eventually trickle down to the smaller screens where we spend most of our time like phones, monitors, laptops. Okay, for context I'm using a 5 year old Dell gaming laptop. It's got more specs and it's still going strong. Because of the SSD, the laptop feels relatively fast and I can run most games in high or medium settings just fine if the titles are optimized like. I tried to play Elden Ring on it and it just didn't work cause FromSoft don't optimize for PCs. The main problems are the battery and you can only get like off brand batteries now cause they'll stop making them. And video editing on this thing sucks. It's doable with proxies but Da Vinci crashes whenever I try to scrub through the timeline so I just hope for the best when rendering. If you go back to my older videos, the syncing of some elements is kinda off and, and I just couldn't bother going back. And I'm talking about this cause I think mobile computing is the way to go now. Desktop computers are great but not everyone has the desk space and laptops are just more useful. Unless you need the power and have the money, it's better to get something portable. And like the power in most laptops is fine for most people. My main gripe of laptops is the batteries for most windows based laptops. And I'm talking about serious work like coding, photo and video editing, not just browsing reddit. Intel Evo makes some difference but still the Apple silicon powered macbooks are way better. And it's just reassuring that a laptop can handle my workload in a single charge. The reason for this is because Apple uses ARM based SOCs. ARM is a newer architecture of processors opposed to x86 in traditional computers. It's the same ones found in phones and one of the reasons why phones have great performance as well as great battery life. The chips are smaller, more compact and just consume less power while giving great performance. And you might think why isn't every chip ARM based now? They do have some disadvantages like they are not upgradable, the RAM is integrated inside the chip as well as other important components. But still I feel the advantages outweigh the cons 
and laptops are getting less upgradable anyways. Maybe companies could figure out how to make the chips replaceable instead of trying to make the devices obsolete from the start. That would be cool. Note, Windows do have ARM based laptops, but they just suck. I mean, just imagine being able to play almost any game for 5 hours on a laptop and still having 60% battery left. Does anyone feel like having the best graphics isn't that important anymore? Most games just look fine and the gameplay and storyline are more important and also the game needs to work. Don't get me wrong, the latest GPUs are great but if you're just playing eSport titles then you don't need them. Even older GPUs are just fine for most people. Devices like the Steam Deck have proven people are willing to play games on lower quality for portability. The Steam Deck is great, it's basically like a PC and even though it's not as powerful, things like upscaling really help. Game devs make their games for popular devices and Steam Deck being popular means the devs will most likely optimize their titles for this hardware. Just look at the Switch, it's got like half the power of the Steam Deck and it can run the Wizard or something. Witcher 3 only outputs at 720p when it's docked and boy does that ever drag every one of its downgrades into the harsh light of day. Sure, it maintains a mostly consistent 24 to 30 FPS, but textures are muddy, the poppin is exponentially more noticeable. I implore you, if you want to play this game on a TV and have access to any other platform, you're doing yourself a disservice running it on Switch. Kind of a reason why you don't need to upgrade your console as much, as devs find it easier to optimize for specific hardware rather than just the hundreds of GPUs in the market. And with consoles, with every generation, people say this generation of consoles is the last ones, cause PCs will replace them or something. I don't think they are going anywhere. Consoles are just simpler and more user friendly than a PC. Even if consoles didn't have any exclusives, the ease of use of just playing your games is reason enough to still buy consoles. Like a lot of people will just never venture out of their browser and navigate the OS. But even here, portable consoles are the future for me. With the developments in AMD's RDNA chips, upscaling tech and optimized titles, it's just hard to beat the experience of playing games while going on a road trip. Specifically electric cars. Teslas are good. Electric is the future and Teslas are leading the way. But I do feel they need to step up their quality control and interiors. I recently watched MKBSD saying how most people don't care about panel gaps and I feel the same way. But like if you've got a car that has got better interior and better quality for the same price then I feel the choice is obvious. The traditional car companies are playing catch up and I feel Tesla's charging network is the only thing saving Tesla right now. So they need to step up their game and relying on their charismatic leader might not be the best choice. And also like we need to look into synthetic fuel. It's a process where we take carbon dioxide from the environment and using electricity to separate hydrogen from water and then later combining those two and there you go. But you know there is like a lot more chemistry. Fuel like gasoline and diesel is still needed for stuff like trucks, ships and planes. This process isn't exactly new. They did this in World War II and at the time they produced electricity by burning coal cause everyone thought they were going to die anyways. Until battery technology develops, synthetic fuel seems like a good alternative. Every year, we hear about this amazing new battery technology that is dense and can hold more energy and last longer. I don't know the exact reasons but battery tech is hard and we need to be extra careful considering they could blow up. A lot of the chemicals might not be stable and lithium ion batteries are for the most part. And also making them in mass is going to be a huge task. But when it does happen, it'll be quite a thing to be able to use our phones for months at a time without charging. Similar to TVs and laptops, people just don't need the latest phone. I'm using a 4 year old phone with a custom ROM and it's fine, still fast and no problem so far. Most people change phones cause they get slower over time. But now the processors are much faster and efficient and will just last a lot longer. The other problems are updates. Most phone companies just don't update their phones. And right now, I would recommend people buy either Samsung phones or iPhones. Even though they might not be the best bang for the buck, the support they give is just better for the end consumer in the long run. Most phones now just have good enough displays, software, batteries and cameras for most people. Yeah, I don't know much about cameras. 
carbon fiber or graphite is advertised to be this miracle substance that will solve all the problems plastics have created. Plastic at the time was also advertised as the dual substance and was also advertised as biodegradable and recyclable. Of course we know now it is extremely hard to recycle plastic to the point that it's just easier to produce newer plastic. Hope carbon fiber does solve our problems but who knows. Down the line maybe we will discover things like burning carbon fiber causes cancer or something. Okay, so this is not much of a prediction but a conspiracy theory. You might know how the wireless earphones industry has grown to be like a multi-billion dollar industry right now. I suspect the reasons they made AirPods like this and not like this is to make it more likely that you lose one of them. Think about it. And also bring back the headphones act. And yeah, that's about it. I think technology as a whole is a lot more matured. And even though we see metrics like 200 times the performance, we kind of don't need it. And it could just be a marketing plot to trigger our FOMO.